I actually didn't see the eclipse at all. Oh, you didn't? I didn't have the glasses. So you I didn't borrow them from somebody? I work from home. I didn't even know where to get. <laughs> I didn't even think I didn't even, you know, I didn't I was you were out of town cuz you were seeing the full eclipse in oh, Ohio. I was going to brag about the full eclipse. No, but the I didn't even I really remember I was working and then the kid Leno had a dentist appointment, and then he came in like into his dentist appointment with his eclipse glasses, and I was like, "Oh man, I missed it." Oh, now I have to wait till twenty forty five. That's it's a long wait, hun. <laughs> um, was it life changing? I'm not sure it was life changing, but I will say this: so I have a client, and they did their strategic planning retreat in Cleveland because they knew it was in the path of the full eclipse, and I was like. Really, we're gonna go all the way to Cleveland? Like, is it? Is it? it, it I mean, okay, we, there's a shadow, cool. Mm-hmm. But then I saw it, and it is really remarkable. I will say it is. It is far cooler than I thought it was gonna be. My colleague said it because he is was also in the path. Mm-hmm. He said the temperature dropped. Yeah, temperature like how drops. how much does it drop? I mean, not not. I mean, I had to put. I put. A, I put a. It, it got cooler, and I went and put a coat on. I would say maybe 10 degrees, something like that, 5 degrees. Cool. But we we were like, so we did this strategic planning retreat on the top of a, like in, in the, the loft of this building, and then, which was cool because it was just our group, and then you could see on all the other buildings, there was just crowds of people drinking, partying, and they got, everybody's throwing drones up. Uh, and you had just your group? Like just this, this, yeah, this strategic planning group was there. Because they had rented out the top of the building to do the retreat. And so oh. we just walked outside onto the roof. How cool is that? The deck on the roof. It was I, really cool. I like how they planned that out. Somebody was for sure. It was, I will say, this is a side note, it was a very well, like a well-organized retreat. As far as like when dinners were and all that kind of stuff. They, they had, like they had it together. They had a and good then, party planner. And then I, <laughs> I didn't even like track what was happening. I'm like, oh, this is an interesting place to do the re- like the actual meeting in the top of this random random building. Why not do it at the hotel? The reason is because of the retreat or the, because of the eclipse. So like at three thirty, we all went outside and then could watch the eclipse. It Very cool. cool. It was cool. That well, I heard good things and the kids were super excited about it. But we have lots to talk about because we went on vacation. Can I say one more thing about the eclipse because yes. I'm thinking of it, which I thought was cool. So I love, I like love hobbyists, right? And there mm. were a lot of photographers out there, and there was some guy and he's like throwing up a bunch of drones. I'm like, why? Like, w- this is an unobstructed view of of the sun. Why do you need? A drone, you, like, are you really getting that much closer to the sun with a drone? And the reason is, is they don't take a picture of the eclipse. They take a picture of the city behind the eclipse. So because the because of the, the amount of filtering that happens on the way to the full eclipse, they get super orange. And so there's really cool photography of, like, the buildings and stuff oh. that are impacted by that. Cool. That is cool. That is cool. Yeah, well, we have had a lot since our last shrink wrap. We mm-hmm. went on, um, we went on vacation. We had Easter. We had we went on vacation to the DR, which was wonderful. I did a another catch this year. Oh, I didn't do like a. You usually get a an Instagram reel out I know, of your you catch. You didn't do it, but I and I did a new trick with my catch. She did a, a trick where she like does the splits over the bar. Yep, it was kind of seductive, mm. for sure. But I didn't make the catch, and Enzo and Lino also qualified for the catch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lino yeah. didn't quite catch. Yeah, it's good though. Yeah, so it was good. Recommend it. And we come back, and you've already got a. We land from the from the Dominican Republic, and within twelve hours, we have. 20 people are at a house for Easter. That was an error. I didn't mean, I thought there was like a day between when we got back and Easter. No. She says it's an error, but the whole time she was going, I'm a hero. This is, (laughs) I'm a hero. Look at, I'm a hero. It's so funny. I listened to Rachel Hollis's podcast this week about like manifesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to embody that and like put it out there, put my energy towards 
I want to be a superhero, and so I'm going to put my energy towards being a superhero. Why do you listen to Rachel Hollis so much and never me? I, I do. Feel like I always makes I like make suggestions. You, I, I feel like you really listen to. What does she do that really captures you? I don't know, but it, like if she were to do the Diddy video, it would have turned. Eh, I begged David. I was like, you need to do a video on Puff Daddy or P Diddy in this raid. Before we jump into the Diddy conversation, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video, Drift. Oh, I meant to tell you, your car smells so nice. Mm -hmm. Teak. <laughs> now, as you heard from Allison there, we are very pleased to have this video sponsored by Drift because they have dramatically improved the fragrance in my car. Historically, it wasn't always great. Now it smells like teak. Now it smells like a place you want to be. When I think about air fresheners, I usually think about those little those little trees that are made out of paper that smell terrible and they definitely don't look good aesthetically. Drift is the opposite of that. It looks very professional, very clean. It fits the car well. So what they send you is they send you a something that holds the fragrance. So it can be wood, it can be stone, it can be metal, but it's sleek, low profile like this. And then they give you a clip which you put on your visor. And then I take the scent and it, there's a magnet that latches it to the bottom of that. For Drift's car care products, the price ranges between nine and $15, so it's very affordable. And what's really cool about the car fresheners is you can get them on a subscription model. So at the start of the first month, they'll send you a starter pack with the scent and the clip, and then every month you can order, if you want, you can order a new scent. They recommend you do it about every 30 days, and you can, if you want, you can get the exact same scent. So for me, I think I am on, this is Teak, Number three, I keep ordering teak because it smells clean. It reminds me of home. I love it. So I keep getting the same scent. Or if you want, you can get a new scent each month. Maybe the best part is because you are a member of the Pop Psych YouTube audience, Drift is offering a 55% discount on your first month. All you have to do is go to drift.co and use the promo code Pop Psych. With that discount, your first month is under $5. I really recommend you try it out. It, it allows you to take a much more intentional approach to managing the fragrance in your car. And my wife loves it. Okay, so let, there's, <laughs> let's let's back up. This is not actually our first podcast back. <laughs> well, I should say, this is not our first recorded podcast back, but we didn't <laughs> upload the first one because Allison was so mad at my interpretation of the Diddy situation. So we did it once, and she goes, you need to react to the Diddy situation. I go, okay, whatever. So I, like, watch a couple of videos on it, and I, and I go, okay, let's go do the podcast. And I thought, I thought I was sensible in reaction to it. No, I went deep on it. I feel like you missed a lot. But just because, I feel like people, I always get this in the comments, like, oh, you don't know enough. But what I, does the extra information substantively change the way I would interpret what's happening? I, I don't think know. so. So maybe we just don't like how you interpreted it. But I wanted to know what is getting into these powerful men's mind where they treat people like, where they just objectify people and treat them as objects and not as human beings. Yeah. You didn't really like delve into that the way I, I wanted. Like I feel like you just, I just did. <laughs> okay, so we did a whole <laughs> podcast and I thought the whole time we're doing the podcast, I'm thinking I'm doing a good job of objectively analyzing behavior. In my head, I was had an applause for good job doing that. And then we turned the camera off, and Allison goes, you cannot put that on the internet. I go, what? Why not? I thought I sounded good. And she goes, you absolutely cannot put that on the internet. Absolutely not. I helped you. So I, I listened to Allison. And then I a couple of days later, I recorded a video reaction to P. Diddy. Mm -hmm. And I thought I did a better job of more sort of concisely stating my opinion and Allison watched it and goes, mm. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't scratch the itch I was looking for. Which is, I, I want a psychologist to get into the brains of these people and explain, explain it away. Like, why do they have entourages that keep them, that, or, you know, I mean, even Michael Jackson, like, they have people around them that don't, Put them in their place and tell them, no, this what you're doing is wrong. And is it fear? Like, why are they able to, like, surround themselves by pe by yes men that actually enable it? That was what I wanted to know. Why do you think? 
I feel like it's fear. They mm-hmm. think in their relationship is probably like um, they're getting something out of it with like P D is promising a career or something, but mm-hmm. mostly fear. That's what I said. But like, and then the other question is like, why is he so bad? Why did he do all this? I think I think <laughs> I want to know it all. No, but but she doesn't. <laughs> I I think you don't. <laughs> I do. I think you don't, and I think <laughs> the people on the internet. I don't think. I think we have a narrative that we like mm-hmm. that we want to believe, and so we like. I can like. You want me to say, or some psychologist, somebody to say, ultimate. Can you take that out. <laughs> no. <laughs> right when I'm going to drop a, a beautiful pearl, <laughs> you just yawn in my face. <laughs> You want me to say ultimate or power corrupts. Wait, what is it? What is the saying? Ultimate power corrupts. Unconditional power corrupts unconditionally. That's what you want me to say. You want me to say because he was so wealthy, if you get wealthy like that, you turn into a monster and you turn into a narcissist and then it's group think. Everybody around you yes, just follows think. you. The group That's, think is what bothers me. But what if Why I are we conditioned to group think? That's adaptive. That's an easy one. Easy answer. Adaptive. To just to, to just follow the group. There's t- you're safer in numbers. Okay, that makes sense. I'm never gonna be that person. I'm not good at you that. You are that person, Al. I you, am you, not. Allison good at that walks person. around like the 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 like the background music in Allison's head when she walks around is like straight out of Indiana Jones. I feel like you like <laughs> You like think you're walking through like the caves and like <laughs> screw civilization, but everybody's influenced by it. That's true. I don't want to be though. Like I want to think of myself like if I were a, a freak off, me being like this is a freak off of the day freak off. Yeah. Well, so get, why don't can you give a summary of sort of the what are the data points that you're like describe catch people up to the Diddy thing? What are you thinking about when it comes to Diddy? Okay, well, there's this woman that just came through on a lawsuit that happened to be one of the, uh, she she was like a bartender on the yacht that is now suing Diddy for um, sex crimes and and stuff. And I just want to know, like, she was on the yacht. She saw that he was spiking, like she claims, that she saw him spiking the cocktails of the women on the yacht. And she did nothing in that moment to protect the the women on that yacht. Like now we're like in a lawsuit later. But like why was why did nothing happen at the time if you knew it was happening? If you're on a yacht with Diddy, what was her role in the yacht? Bartender. She's a bartender. Mm-hmm. So you're a bartender on a yacht with a bunch of partiers, partiers, and top players in the music industry. Did she have other aspirations? Modeling, actress. Singing. I don't know those details. No, I don't know. But maybe. But possibly. And even if it wasn't possible that she wanted to be a you know a model, actress, singer, whatever, it's also possible that she would have been unsafe had she pushed back. Yeah. So I can imagine that if you're in her situation, you're... Okay, you she, that was a bad example. I understand hers. Well, I don't, but I do. But if you were the bartender, you'd have been like, stop, everybody stop. He would not have hired me. I would be the wrong, the wrong hire. Why? I couldn't, I could not deal with all that. You wouldn't like the freakathons? No, the no, I would not like freak-offs, freakathons. <laughs> No, but I, I, okay, so take back, but, like, all the celebrities that were also on the yacht who may not be as powerful as Diddy, but were probably A-list celebrities, Mm -hmm. why did they turn the other way? Well, what do you think? I'm I, I'm trying to think. No, of, I, what, I that this is my question to you. But I feel like I have a I have a perspective, and you don't like the perspective. So why did Cuba? Go, why did Cuba Gooding Jr. not say 
tell people it was wrong. I think I think Cuba Gooding Jr. I believe has been accused of. I don't think he was a uh, complicit bystander. I think he was an actor. So I think he like a he was a bad actor. I think he he engaged. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think he's probably not a good example for the debate. Okay. If you think about like the average. The question is like, let me just can we just set the stage a little bit here, right? So Diddy has had multiple women. Diddy diddles. <laughs> Diddy's had multiple women uh, accuse him of sexual assault from like back in the '90s because there was a new there's a rule in New York where the statute of limitations was held, and so women came forward. I think there was three or four of them that came forward. His ex girlfriend came forward, um, and then all of a sudden there was a sort of cascade of people saying, "Yeah, the guy's a nightmare." And then his one of his I don't know if it was a bodyguard or an assistant or something. I think it was an assistant. Little Rod, right? Mm -hmm. Side note, world's worst rapper name. Little Rod. You'd want to be Big Rod. I'd be, yeah, Thick Rod. Double Rod. Double (laughs) double Rod. (laughs) Long Rod. Anyway, (laughs) Little Rod goes, hey, this guy's a nightmare, right? He he killed somebody. There's underage girls here. There's sex trafficking. The drug use is is out of control. Right, and then all of a sudden now there's this sort of overwhelming, you know, wave of accusations about Diddy. So in the in your question, I think I think everybody's question is, again, I should just say this: we don't know whether or not he did anything, right? We just know he was accused of a lot of things. But when you're accused of this many things, and the feds are breaking into all of your houses with tanks feels like there's something there, mm-hmm. right? So the question is, uh, why did he do it? Well, and there's reverse blackmail because there's cameras in every single room of his house. Uh huh. Oh. So that could be one of the reasons why people, like maybe they were there. Okay, so there's, rever- there's okay. Not bad but the, actors, but complicit actors or whatever. So the, so yeah, so the question is... Uh, what's how, why did why did he do it like is it is it something wrong with diddy is it the wealth what's the dynamic that set him up to end up this way mm-hmm. and then the other question is all the other people that were complicit or that were there are they complicit mm-hmm. and you and i disagree on what, to the extent to which they're responsible for diddy's behavior i think that's why you're mad at me about it i do too i think i feel like some of them like, if all these things are coming out saying there was underage girls mm-hmm. over and over again, mm-hmm. and it was known, mm-hmm. then I feel like, why did we even have the hashtag Me Too movement? Because that was, like, a big movement in Hollywood, but then, like, he got ignored. Like, all those people ignored that. It's happening all simultaneously. I uh, Hold on. I, uh, I vehemently agree with you. Can I vehemently agree? I totally agree with you that the people, I think that that people in Hollywood, I think a lot of people in Hollywood are incredibly uh, insincere when it comes to these sort of public movements. Yeah, so you're right that it's not consistent to be wearing the Me Too tag or the Me Too whatever silver ribbon in 2016 and also be attending the freak off parties and be like this... I agree with you. And I think it, I think a lot, that's the problem with Hollywood is that so much of it is performative. I think you can't take them seriously. Mm-hmm. Like I agree with all of that, but I don't know if, I don't know if you can look at Ashton Kutcher and go, there's a lot of pictures with Ashton Kutcher and Diddy and go, Ashton Kutcher, you were complicit in this or that you knew about this or that there was group thinking you were therefore participating in it. Mm-hmm. I think, and I feel like you, I think you want to say all those people, Ashton Kutcher. I don't Prince know. William. I mean, I don't know. Prince William wasn't there, David. Get it right. It was Pr- Prince Harry. Oh, sorry. Oh, Prince no, Harry, I whatever. actually do think Prince William, but that was, no, it's not. I think it's not. It's more like, like Jay-Z or Beyonce. You know, Beyonce is big women's power. Yeah. You know, it's like those women. Um, I don't know the 
I don't know the ancillary people that, like, you know, I didn't know Ashton Kutcher was there, but, or like, um, like, I feel like Usher, like Usher was like, he went on, um, Howard Stern and was like, oh yeah, I'd never have my kids there. Like okay, Usher's a good example because Usher was a kid. He was underage. Usher was like 16 staying at Diddy's house looking for a music career. Right. So he should, if if he was abused, I feel like he, he of all people should have stopped it. At 16? No, he's not 16 anymore. He wasn't, he wasn't joining the freak offs when he was older. He's just holding it in. You think you should go? So I guess that's the. So I guess that. So you're thinking Usher is now. So essentially, Usher sees some horrific things that he shouldn't see mm -hmm. by his own admission at 16, as he's trying to build his career. And you're looking at it and going, "Hey, Usher, now that you're 40 years old, you should go back and hold Diddy accountable for the behaviors you saw." Right. I don't know if I, I don't, okay, maybe not Usher, but I, I'm, like, trying to understand. Someone needed to hold him accountable, and no one yeah. did. I agree, I agree with you, but I guess this is. What about, okay, here's a good, I know who should have held him accountable. Who? His chief of staff, KK. She should have held him accountable. She, because I feel like she was the biggest enabler. Is KK like a Ghislaine Maxwell, though? Yes. So she's part, so she's, she's more than. Complicit. She's a, she's a bad actor also. She's a bad actor, yeah. But I guess what I'm saying, and I think the reason why people, I, I feel like I keep getting pushback on this, like I'm, like people think I'm giving everybody a pass. I'm not. I'm just saying we, we have to be, there's nuance in everybody's behavior. There's nuance in the reason why they do what they do and how they do what they do and the level of risk that they would have to take to raise a flag, especially when they're not actively involved in it or don't actively see it, right? They're, like, I'm sure, from what I've read, it was, they were these, you know, these white parties or whatever felt normal, and then, you know, the, the clock would strike 12 or strike 1 or whatever, and then all of a sudden, you know, crazy behavior started happening. And, you know, like he was, did you read about him paying uh, male prostitutes to come in? Mm -mm. he's paying male prostitutes to come in to sleep with women, and then he's walking around watching everybody. Like, it turns into this, like, just a crazy environment. Okay, and but I, I understand the crazy. Okay, so then that happens, and it turns into crazy, and they all go home, and they're like, that was fine. But I think you're, I, but, but I just, again, they're not right, but imagine if you're there, and you're sitting there, and we're like, man, I sure hope we make it someday in the music industry, and I'm so excited that I made it to the white party. This is a big deal. We're all dressed in white. We're all fancy. And all of a sudden, you see some porn star coming in, sleeping with some girl and Diddy's watching or sleeping with some guy and Diddy's watching it. Are you going to stand up to all of that happening around you and just blow the whistle and go, everybody knock it off? Like, what are you going to That's not. That's not. Do? That's not the... Things that bother me. Like, I don't I don't care about the orgy part. I care about, like, the underage people that are now going to live with trauma the rest of their lives. And yeah. and it was known that they were underage. I, but, like, that's part of... So, again, like, I feel like I'm sitting here defending... I'm not defending Diddy. Mm -hmm. And I 100% agree with you that if people knew that there were underage girls there then they're absolutely responsible. But what I don't think is clear based on what we know is who knew and how many people were, were aware of that. Do you think that there were some people that knew? That yes. there were underage girls yes. there? And so then if, like, those people... I'm not saying everybody, but I do... Do you think some of those people should have held him accountable? Yes. <laughs> because that's the thing is, I, I mean, I feel like I... <clears throat> I feel like, yes, not everybody knows. <coughs> but I think there were a lot of people that did. Maybe. And, and, and if they knew, then they're absolutely culpable. I guess what I'm pushing back on you on and the, way, the reason why we keep fighting about it is I think that culpability 
there's a reason I don't I think the narrative is that uh, everybody in Hollywood is sick everybody that comes from this level of wealth is sick and so when you get them all together in a house they all become corrupted looking for some kind of stimulation and they all default to this perverted uh, style of uh, interaction that includes you know underage sex trafficking you know this like obscene drug use the manip you know, your treat your your objectifying people i think that it i think that's the narrative and i don't believe that that's true and i guess that's what i'm i'm just advocating for a more discerning look at it to go there were a there were first of all, we have no idea really what happened but there was probably i think a lot of different things going on and different levels of awareness of the dynamics and so for the news to go all of these people were involved and knew what was happening and they're, they're doing it because it's a group think i just don't think that that's the right i don't think it's a nuanced view and it, i think this requires nuance <laughs> allison i can just tell you right now the camera's gonna turn off and allison's gonna tell me we can, can we can we still use this podcast if i feel that way i feel like you keep wanting to shoehorn Ev like the A-list actors. I'm like saying, why did Diddy do this? He had an inner circle that enabled him to do this. Did Diddy? Why is, why did Diddy? This is a, but why this is an did, easy answer. Uh, why did um, all the people um, um, what's his name that killed himself? Epstein. Like why? My question is why they eat. They all had inner circles that helped enable their actions. They didn't do it themselves. Why are they able to do this? The people, first of all, the perpetrators. So the Epstein's of the world, the Diddy's of the world. I feel very strongly were broken. They were sick. The people before they were wealthy. Mm -hmm. I I promise you. Did he have, if these things, if these accusations are true, the, a healthy person does not become a pedophile. The chances of that are so slim. If you are a pedophile, the data is overwhelming. Likely you had some kind of traumatic event happen to you. Mm -hmm. I think that Diddy grew up in a very traumatic environment. And my guess was he grew up in a very unsafe environment, an environment where he had no power no personal agency no resources i think he was probably victimized and so for him i think his whole life has been designed around getting back the power retaining control i think for him sex is power money is power maneuvering people is power and so that's it's led to this perversion that we see the fact that the perversion led to these sick parties these freak off parties is because it was left unchecked. The average person can't use money to maneuver people. The average person can't use money to push off the authorities. The average person can't access the things that he can access. So what it looks like is more extreme, but it's the Diddy is the same as the pedophile down the street that was mistreated as a child and now shows up in this distorted way. Yeah. Like that I think that I, I I would argue I, I would argue strongly that that view is probably at least it makes the most sense. It does not make sense to me that you have a healthy, high functioning person that has no psychological trauma, and then you give him a billion dollars, and all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, let's start sex trafficking minors." Mm -hmm. Like that. That's there's a lot of very wealthy, healthy people that never perpetrate like this. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, what, how you, what do you think about that? Yeah, I was just thinking about Diddy's kids. Like, did they experience trauma or now, because they're also in trouble? Are they just modeling behavior? I think growing up in that environment is traumatic. Yeah. See, seeing, I mean, you're talking about, he's accused of murder, sex trafficking minors. Uh, I don't know about peddling drugs, but rampant drug use and erratic behavior. I mean, th they've been exposed to 
sex at a very early age. Like I, I would argue that they have been totally traumatized and their relationship with money, power, sex is totally disordered as well. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I feel like that doesn't scratch the itch that you're wanting. I don't know what you're wanting. I keep thinking like, well, I don't know what to say so that you go, that makes sense. <laughs> that does That does make sense. I still wonder like the... You know, the A-list people that didn't need Diddy's support that hung out with him. Like, like, wouldn't that, wouldn't there be a lot of red flags? <laughs> like, where you wouldn't want to be around it? Like, it seems like there would have been a lot of red flags for them to be like, this isn't for me. But they were around it. So I think just understanding why these other people wanted to be there. I, be part of it. Yeah. I don't know. I do. Th I don't know. I do think they are complicit. Um, my gut reaction would be that I think the people around him were either financially dependent on him. They were scared of him. They had the reverse blackmail, right? That they mm. were, they allowed something to go that they thought was relatively minor. And then they're sort of locked in because, you know, there's tapes of them. I mean, that was, I, I keep reading about that being, that was the big, the reason why they raided his houses, right, was to look for all those videotapes. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, is, uh, it's why has the Epstein list not come out? Powerful people. Right? There's a, that's a, that's a, the part mm -hmm. where the authorities, like, seem to comply is con very concerning. Yeah. But they got the tapes from Diddy, I hopefully... But I think I think you have people that were super ambitious and super narcissistic around him that were just looking out for themselves and then turned a blind eye, mm -hmm. you know, denied what was happening, or uh, I think were so fearful. Yeah. I, so I, I think that, I guess I would say this: I think there's a group of people that fall into those buckets, and yes, they are complicit; they're responsible for their behavior. I, I b agree with all that, but I just think it's different you, than the group that's actively what's the tt or whatever the person who was it who's the woman that's like kk going, kk you know i think you have to view kk different than joe below that shows up yeah it's so crazy i feel like you've lost interest in this you, are you ready for you sleepy now no, I haven't. I mean, I've just, I don't know what to say about I'm it. More things need. are going to come. I'm not meeting your needs. I just want a psychologist to talk to me more about Diddy's psyche. Calling I'm, on a friend. I'm I'm, all, <laughs> I'm out of like uh, psychological, psychological tidbits. That's all I got. <laughs> okay, so guess what else? Um, you know Kat from the crystal ball or Kate from a crystal ball? Um, without a crystal ball. Without a crystal ball. Yeah. So, um Going back to sister wives, mm -hmm. um, it sounds like he was like really reaching out to people before he he passed away. Garrison was Garrison. Yeah, she she put out a video. You and I heard it together. She put out a video that was let me in say depth. This. Yeah, I and I don't know. I mean, I without a crystal ball gets a lot of flack on the internet for not always being accurate and so uh i don't i but i mean i don't listen to her but i've listened to this one video it seemed like she was pretty diligent about collecting the data so to whatever extent the data that she has is accurate um i mean it sounds like they knew he was very depressed it sounds like he had a significant drinking problem yeah it sounds like uh he was reaching out uh, I don't know if he was reaching. Why do you think he was? Say more about that. You think he was reaching out? Because he he texted people that um, he texted people before he um, he did it. So so it seems like he was reaching out. <laughs> Are you worried about saying committed suicide? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like you won't say Garrison's name and you, you keep like shying away from saying committed suicide. Because that's incorrect. I've been told. Yes. <laughs> but I think it's a, let me just say this. I think that in the, in the PC world, 
it's more sensitive to say died by suicide mm -hmm. or completed suicide. And I honestly, I think it matters very little. And I think it matters more that people are able to talk freely about it than to say things, uh, quote unquote, the right way. The people, most of the people that are frustrated by the wrong language are not the audience. They're not the people that you're worried about hurting, right? You're worried about hurting people that have had someone around them that has died by suicide. Yeah. And I don't know that, I, that there's a lot of evidence that those are the people that really suffer when you use the wrong word. Yeah. So, so yes, people will get mad at you if you say committed suicide, but a lot of people say committed suicide in it. And, and yeah, died by. Syn syntax, died by, yeah. Died I'm by behind suicide. the times. Um, so it's really sad. So as go, can you say, so say what you think. Don't stop worrying about what you're saying. No, I, I don't remember what I was saying. I was just saying as more comes out, it just makes me more and more sad. So, yes, but can I, can I, can I critique what, what Katie put together? Mm -hmm. well, first of all, I don't know why anybody listens to us on Sister Wives. Come, if you could look at the amount of effort and energy she put in, that was a very well done video. It was, yeah. Like super thorough. And I'm thinking, I don't know, I have no space to talk because I've done n not a tenth of the research that she has. Um, what I didn't like about it, I guess I have a couple of thoughts. Yes, he reached out to people, right? So Katie has text messages where he texts, he reaches out to um, Janelle and his brothers, Gabe, Garrison, Logan, and uh, somebody else I'm spacing, Hunter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and his dad, and mm -hmm. Dayton. And the um, people from the crew. And the people from the crew. And, but that can be him saying goodbye. Right, his mom asks if he's safe, and he says, "I know you're worried about it, but I don't have a weapon." Mm -hmm. Right? If he was if he was looking for support, he could have said, "Come get me." Come get me. I've got a weapon. I need to talk to you. Right? But it could have been a thing where he had made the decision already. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that's an important distinction because the only thing I didn't like about what Katie said is she says um, he reached out to Cody. And Cody didn't respond. He reached out to Dayton and Dayton didn't respond. And, you know, I just wonder what would have happened if Cody had sort of played the correct role as a father and responded to uh, his mm -hmm. son. And I struggle with the, I just feel like now we're placing blame on Cody for it. And I've been very critical of Cody. We've been very critical of Cody. But to me, this is sort of, there's so much more going on as far as his drinking and his depression. And you don't know what the, backstory is it could be that that Cody's drawn a line where he's like I can't respond to him anymore it could be that Cody didn't see the text message you know what I mean the implication that um this one moment is the reason I think is probably not fair no, it's yeah. not fair it's not fair yeah. and it's not fair about a super significant thing you know yeah it's not fair that's true um it's just interesting it was interesting to see more of it. So thank you for that video if you guys haven't seen it. Um, we got a crystal ball. Yeah. Is there a latest video? I don't know if it was. I don't like always listen to it, but it popped up. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready to give us some tips? I've Oh boy, tips. I don't have any I have no tips ready. What well, no, I just feel like Rachel Hollis had these really good tips about basically like putting put manifesting and putting it out there and putting your energy into um, putting your energy where you want, like, the direction of your life to go. And what do you think about that? And do you have a tip for that as well? Because, <laughs> well, know. the reason I say that was I was feeling really tired today, but she was, <laughs> but she was saying, like, if you, if you always are saying that you're tired and you're tired and you're tired, then you actually become tired. Yes. And so I'm not going to say that I'm tired. Um, what if we do a podcast <laughs> and I can tell that you're going to fall asleep on the podcast and you're actually yawning while we're talking? <laughs> what does that fall in Rachel's? Not tired. Not tired. <laughs> need to get up and move. Okay. No, I'm not tired at all. <laughs> Would you like to buy me? Actually, you know my, my that attorney that I listen to, what you're supposed to do when someone says, are you tired? Yes. What are you supposed to do? 
I'll t- he gave me three tips. This I like him a lot. Okay, ready? Let me just first just say, <laughs> Allison is Allison. Has, I love life tips. <laughs> Allison has a lot of um, I don't know what we call it di- directional feedback for the YouTube channel. She would like it to be tip heavy, so <laughs> we, everything needs to be a tip. All right, so what is this? So there's some lawyer lawyer you follow that gives that he gives tips like how to be assertive and tips. It, what to say when people say, "Are you tired?" How about no? What is the answer? What do you say? That makes it really better. Thanks. Or would you like to buy the next coffee? <laughs> Those are the, that's the tip. <laughs> He had better ones. I didn't do it as well. They're really good. There was one where it was like, <laughs> how do you, she showed me and she's like, I mean, we're, I think I'm in bed reading or something. And Allison hits me and she, listen to this tip for how to deal with conflict. And it was like, what do you do when someone disagrees with you and you want to tell them you disagree? Yeah. You say, I have an I opposing see, view. I oh, see it differently. I see it differently. Yeah. And but as you as a viewer go like, whoa, that's helpful. <laughs> Sometimes you just need someone to give you the words. Oh, jeez! All right. Don't you ever just want someone to help you? Like you can't find, like what you need to be doing in the moment. So, <laughs> no. I I mean I. I think think you and I are wired differently. My <laughs> default is whoever I'm listening to to be like, you're stupid. Oh. It's to a fault. Like I talk about, I have a colleague at work, Dana, mm-hmm. is like the most sweetest and open-minded person. Like I've I've seen her be in trainings before where someone comes in and gives a presentation on emotional intelligence. Dana is an absolute expert on emotional intelligence. She did her dissertation on like ethics in the workplace. Like there's no one that knows more about emotional intelligence than Dana. But someone comes in and presents on emotional intelligence, and D- Dana is like, "Let me hear more. That's so interesting. I, I hadn't thought about that. Like that. Like she's a good person. Always learns. Whereas I will be like, dumb. Moving. I, I like. Well, I won't. I struggle to like have an open mind and act and learn. It's a problem. I, I don't feel like you're not open. I feel like you're really open minded. If it's in something that I think I know about." then I am very close-minded to a fault. Oh. Like, for example, Rachel Hall says, hey, you should uh, whatever manifest. And like, even as you're saying it, I'm like, I disagree. Even though <laughs> I really don't disagree, I just like, my, I struggle to... But I feel like you are the best at it. At what? At manifesting. And pu- like putting it out there, putting your energy into it, even though you don't think you're doing it, I feel like you definitely do it. That's why I'm asking you for a tip on it. Versus, like, if you're always negative or you're always like, that's the way it is, so that's the way it is, <laughs> then, you, then you never, like, then, you, then that you're not putting your energy into that, and so then you're not going to get what you actually want, you know? You can't just say that you want something. You can't just put it in the air either. You have to put energy into it is what she's saying. I have two tips. Okay. I think you're going to, I hope you like these tips. (laughs) Okay. Tip one. (laughs) I think I may have three tips. Hold on. (laughs) Tip one is I think you need to have hubris in everything you do. And I think that in society we view hubris as a negative thing, but I think you need to have a distorted sense of who you are and what you can accomplish. I think people that have hubris, they're more likely to try new things. They're likely to be more resilient when they face criticism or failure. They'll put themselves into more difficult situations. Mm -hmm. And they're more likely to to move from, move um, an idea into an action. Okay. I like that. How does that rank? How does that do on your tip scale? That's good. All right. Tip two is you have to move. If you have a goal or you don't even know what your goal is, you ha- movement is better than not moving. Mm-hmm. Like, I hate when people go, um, I'm just working on myself. <laughs> well, what are you doing? I'm just eating bonbons and watching I had TV. A, I had right? a colleague that always told me, I, she, I'm just doing a lot of work. 
on myself. I'm just like, I'm finding a lot of stuff out. And I'd be like, really? Like, cause I, I think maybe I'm a little like Dana. I'm like, oh, like I need to be finding stuff out. Like I am really dropping the ball on doing the work on myself. Yes. That <laughs> you are like that. And, and no one ever goes like, well, wait a second. Do share. What does that work look like? Right. If, if working on yourself means that you're going to a therapist and you're starting a workout regimen and you're trying, you know, you're in culinary school at night, then I'm good with it. Mm. I don't care what it is. So I do think that the default should be when you're trying to move things forward is to show action every day. Even if the action is in the wrong direction, it's easier to pivot than it is to start. So we should immediately always start, start now and pivot versus yeah. ruminating and working on yourself before you yeah. try something. Yeah. Okay. What's the third one? I think I forgot the last tip. That's it. Okay. I Do feel like those, those not rank up on the, the Rachel Hollis tip scale. <laughs> I think you have the potential <laughs> to be a good tip. To be a good tip. To, be, to be good. Like as good as that, um, as that, that, lawyer. that lawyer, and also as good as Rachel Hollis. But I think we you need to start with the tip. And then we carry the tip throughout the podcast. It's feeling very sexual with the tip. <laughs> right? David. Well, when we say that all the, I, like, I feel like we need to get merch that says, <laughs> start with the tip. David. You said it. I didn't say it. They're going to hear it. David. All right. <laughs> Cut that out. I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> Gross. So, okay, so how about here? Let me just try this one on. Al, I have a tip for you. Uh huh. Do you want to know how to accomplish things in your life? Start by moving first and then pivot. End scene. Is that mo motivating? I know. I don't like, I don't want into the tip thing. I feel like th these are silly. Right? No. I like tips. All right. Give, why don't you have a tip? I'm not the psychologist. I'm here to learn. Okay. So what was, what was Rachel's, what was Rachel's thing that you need to manifest? Just that, like putting it out, just putting it, you can't just put it out there. You have to put energy into it and really like really go after it. You can't just throw it out there. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Like, I, I think, oh, I, last tip is I agree that, um, you, you know, sometimes you, you never know if you're going to get lucky. Here's my last tip. Mm. You never know if you're going to get lucky, but you should actively put yourself in the position to get lucky. Like, you should be thinking about what do I want and how can I prepare myself so that if something happens, I'm ready. Yeah. This is why, one of the reasons why I started doing this. YouTube it was like, I was like, I want to have a larger voice and I need to acquire the skills to speak and to be on camera. Right. And so I feel like I am better prepared now if I had the opportunity to be on camera than I would have three years ago. And I think in three years from now, I'll be better. And if something happens where I have the opportunity to have a wider audience, people will go, Oh, well he was lucky because he got this opportunity. And I would be like, no, but I spent the last five years working at this thing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yep. I think that's a good point. I feel like you don't like my tips. I'm, I work really hard at my tips and you're not into them. I, th I thought your tip was good. One more, what did I, the first tip is put yourself in the position to be lucky. Yep. S do something. It's easier to pivot than it is to start. Mm -hmm. And have hubris. Yep. Think you can. Think you can. I also, here's fourth tip. Okay. Catch yourself from being Eeyore. I'm going to respond to that tip like you do. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, <laughs> I guess that's good. That, I guess that counts as a tip. <laughs> Don't be Eeyore. I think, I, I do think that is a good tip. Yeah. To not be Eeyore. Mm -hmm. To have energy about it. Mm -hmm. I, I will say, back to Rachel Hollis real quick, is... I think the idea of manifesting is silly, mm -hmm. but I, I think manifesting works because it leads people to 
show energy in the direction of the thing that they want. And that puts them in a better position. So then why is it silly? Well, don't call it manifesting. You're not man. Like the idea that's manifesting is that you put it out there and the universe gives it to you. It's like inherently passive. It's given to you by the universe. So we need a new word. It's just you're energizing. Okay, you're energizing. You're ener- you're, you're not doing- manifesting, but you're energizing. Yeah, not the universe isn't just giving you stuff. You are creating the environment that leads to the thing you want. Yeah. Okay, I like it. All right, I love you. Love you. So I think I did. I think Allison's still not happy with my Diddy interpretation, my Diddy reaction, but I did my best. Before you go, I want to thank Drift for sponsoring this video. Please check them out. Follow the link below, drift.co, and use the promo code POPPSYCH. I really recommend it. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.